Jerusalem was burning. The Apostle Peter could see it in his mind as he read over the words he had been inspired to write. And it wasn't just Jerusalem. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, is what he had written and is what he pondered over. The world that he had been called out of, the world that he had clung on to. You remember, no unclean or common thing have I eaten, is what he said. The world he had been warned about. He could see it burning in the words he had written. And in the context of those flames, he and the world he had written of were asked the question, what manner of persons ought ye to be? And what about us, brothers and sisters? What about now? Second of Thessalonians and chapter one tells us, doesn't it, of the world, of our world. We are told in verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world, brothers and sisters, is burning. And the question is asked of us as well. What manner of persons ought we to be? And wonderfully, brothers and sisters, we are given the answer. We're told what manner of persons we should be. Second of Peter, chapter three and verse 11. Second of Peter, chapter three and verse 11 says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We, brothers and sisters, are a people who look for and haste unto. The word looking for means to expect or to look for. If you just come back to um, the Acts of the Apostles and have a look at Acts and chapter 3. We're told in Acts chapter 3 of the record of Peter and John who go up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And there was one, a certain man in verse two, who was lame from his mother's womb, who in verse three sees Peter and John about to go into the temple and asks an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. That's the same word as is translated looking for in verse 12 of second of Peter 3, here was someone who was expecting something as he looked up at Peter and John. And we, brothers and sisters, are people who are expecting something, aren't we? We've been helped in our looking today, haven't we, brothers and sisters? We've seen those things which give us assurance and hope that the, the coming of the Lord may be soon. And we have been encouraged and strengthened in our, our looking forward to that time. We, brothers and sisters, know what we are looking for, don't we? It's a contrast, isn't it, to the Gentiles, those nations that Brother Mark was speaking of in Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 26, we're told that men's hearts failed them for fear and for looking after or for expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. They don't know what they're looking for, but we, brothers and sisters, do. But we're not just looking for. Verse 12 of 2 of Peter 3 tells us 
that we are hasting unto. The revised version translates that as earnestly desiring. It's the same with the new revised standard version. The margin there suggests that as an, uh, an alternative translation as well. well. That's the import here. This is the manner of people that we should be expecting and desiring the coming of our master, looking forward to the time of righteousness and glory which is to come. But it doesn't stop with looking forward, brothers and sisters. We are lookers forward. We are hopers. We are expectors. But our gaze forward must not be allowed to overlook the life we live now, must it? Come back with me to Hebrews and have a look at Hebrews in chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, brothers and sisters, was one who looked forward, who saw the joy that was set before him, and it affected what he did. It changed, it, well, he was obedient to God because he could see the joy that was before him. He endured that death he despised that shame he is exalted because he looked forward and that has to be the same with us brothers and sisters we have to be prepared in our looking forward to mold our way of life so that it fits that standard which has been set for us and that's what second of Peter chapter three says, brothers and sisters, we we asked the question, didn't we? Or we had the question asked of us, what manner of persons ought ye to be? And we said we are lookers forward from verse 12. We are desiring from verse 12. But what does the end of verse 11 say? Second of Peter, chapter three, right at the end of verse 11 says, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And that, brothers and sisters, gives us the key. Who should we be today but the people that we can see in the future? That is who we are. And that is who we must be striving to be now. In holy conversation and godliness. You'll probably note the word all there at the end of verse 11, where it says all holy conversation and godliness isn't there in the original. The, 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 the record says, or how, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness or holy living and godliness? But I think the translators have, have put it in there in verse 11 because it's a deliberate reference back to the, the very first chapter of the first epistle of Peter. Come to first epistle of Peter, chapter one, and just have a look at verse 15. It says in the first epistle of Peter, chapter one and verse 15. But as he which hath called you, as God is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy is a deliberate reference by the spirit right at the end of the writings of peter to what he had written right at the beginning that those who were called those who were the believers in christ should be holy 
because the one that called us is holy, brothers and sisters. Judgment and destruction are coming. But remember what you have been shown. Be like God. That's the import of Second of Peter chapter 3. The elements will be dissolved. But remember what you have learned. And it's the same with us, brothers and sisters. We must be like God in holy living and godliness. That's what first epistle of Peter chapter 1 verse 15 says, isn't it? Be holy because he is holy. And that's a quotation from Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. And we're not going to go back to Leviticus 11. But in Leviticus 11, we have that long list of the laws of the clean and the unclean animals. You may eat this, you may not eat this. If it splits the hoof, if it chews the cud, it's clean. If it doesn't do these things, it's not clean. And there were lessons there for Israel. But the great lesson was emphasized right at the end of Leviticus 11. All of these laws were to teach the children of Israel that they were to be holy because God is holy. And laws about eating, brothers and sisters, are laws that you think about every day, aren't they? They're laws that affect you at every mealtime. Be holy in all manner of living. In all holy living and godliness. Everything we do, brothers and sisters, should be governed by this single thought. Am I being like God? Is that the manner of person that I am? Just come back to Colossians in chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 begins this um, section in Colossians, or continues this section in Colossians, which really starts in verse 20 of chapter 2, that is about how we respond to what we believe. How does what we believe affect how we live? And Colossians 3 verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above. If that is our position, brothers and sisters, that's what we have to look for. The things that are above, the things that are of God, the things that are the standard which Christ showed us, the example which he set. Set our affection on things above. And it's all summed up in verse 15 of Colossians chapter 3 which says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Maintain a unity of purpose and of will with the Father. That's what must rule in our hearts directing our actions the idea of the word for rule there is uh, a greek word which means to be an umpire or a daysman it's it's the thing that makes the decision that, that makes the the choice if there is a judgment to be made it's the umpire that makes that judgment and the judgment in our lives must be the peace of god is what i am doing maintaining that peace with god Am I showing God in my life? And Colossians 3 has shown us what that looks like. Verse 12 of Colossians chapter 3 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. These are the characteristics that we must be showing. This is the manner of person that we must be. And above all this, brothers and sisters, verse 14 tells us to put on love. 
which is the bond of perfectness, the thing that holds everything together. We put on the character of Christ, brothers and sisters, and it directs our steps. We become the people that we see when we look forward. We become the people that we hope to be in the future. We become the glory of God that we expect to fill the world in the time to come. That's what 1st of John chapter 3 is telling us, isn't it? Come to 1st of John chapter 3 and verse 1. The first epistle of John, the third chapter and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. What manner of people ought we to be? What manner of love has been shown? It's the same manner, brothers and sisters, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world is burning. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. This is what we're looking for, brothers and sisters, and this is how we must be now. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. There was a time in Israel's history, it was a time of anticipation, it was a time of looking forward, and yet the gaze of the children of Israel was backward. Come to Exodus in chapter 32. In Exodus in chapter 32, we, we, we know what we're going to find when we get there, don't we, brothers and sisters? Exodus chapter 32, verse 1, the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. And the people gathered themselves together to Aaron, and they said to him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. And so they make themselves a golden calf, and they look back to Egypt. And in the context of that, looking back, brothers and sisters, God reveals himself to Moses. Show me thy way, says Moses. Show me thy glory. And so in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6, Yahweh passed by before Moses and proclaimed Yahweh, Yahweh Ael, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. We can hear, can't we, the echoes to Colossians chapter 3. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. This was the standard for the people. This was the manner of person that they should be. And it is the same for us, brothers and sisters. Here is the God who has proclaimed himself. Here is the character that we should be following. We are lookers forward. We are hopers. We are expectors for the future. Let us ensure that our eyes are on the glory to come. Which glory is the character of our God? Let us remember mercy and grace. Let us remember to be forgiving and long-suffering, to care for each other, to support each other as we see the way ahead of us. The way is difficult, the way can be long, the way can feel hard, and brothers and sisters, we all need to help each other, to uplift each other. And we meet together on days like this to be strengthened, to be uplifted, to see the way forward made clear to us. The world is burning, brothers and sisters. How are we ensuring 
that we care for each other, that we call people to come with us as we look for the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwell righteousness.